Hi everyone, today we're going to cover Foundation for Emails from Zurb. This is version 2 of their product and I gotta say after using it myself uh, in a production environment it's a pretty cool system and I wanted to go over how to install it and then later on we'll have some more videos on how to use it and put together some uh, emails. So let's get started here. Uh, if you want more information on this, just go to foundation.zurb.com slash email emails.html and you can read about all the details of it. What we can do, there's a couple different versions of it and I use the, uh, we'll go into the Zurb stack thing a little bit, um, but it's a system actually, more of a tool stack than it is just a template or uh, just a script. It uses Gulp for the build engine and that will help automate things quite a bit for you as you'll see. Inky HTML is their templating language, and this is kind of the original portion of uh, Foundation for Emails. That simplifies things quite a bit because with HTML emails, you generally have to use a lot of tables, a lot of nested tables, and it gets pretty messy pretty quick. Inky allows you to use a much more simple language to define how your pages are going to be laid out, so it works out really well. Um, use a SAS. Uh, that's part of why we need some of the other tools installed that we'll go over in a minute. Uh, Inliner. This also is a really cool tool for HTML emails specifically because it takes all your CSS and actually inlines it, puts it in line with the HTML. Browser Sync, just for development purposes, it allows us to have uh, development changes immediately be shown in the browser. So it's if you've not used this before, it's pretty awesome to take a look at. And for emails, image compression. Um, that's one of the big things with HTML emails. You want to make sure that, even more so than I think a web browser in some cases, you want the images to be as small as possible to conserve bandwidth. So let's take a look at some of the how to get things installed. And if you go down, here's the page. I'll highlight it here. It's foundation.zurb.com slash emails slash zurb dash stack HTML. And if you click the link here at the bottom, It'll help you get started with the SAS version. Uh, there is a CSS version you can use. You can download the, the CSS for it, but I like to have all the automation with it and some of the programmatic capabilities of SAS. So this is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to jump over to this terminal window. A couple of things you're going to need um, when you get started with this. First off, uh, let me see if I can increase my terminal size a little my appearance a little bit for you and I am let's get this moved up to a 12 here so everybody can see it all right what we want to be able to do first is I created a directory for, to work in and I see one called email dash work we're going to go into there And we've got, I don't think I have every, anything in here at this point. No, okay. A couple things we need to check for first. One is, do we have Git? Yes, we do. Uh, if you're not familiar with Git, uh, there's lots of tutorials online for getting it installed and using it. In this case, the system itself is using Git as part of the install process. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. We also will need Node.js. I've got that installed already. Again, if you go to the, just do a Google search for Node.js, you'll find all the information about it, how to install it. As part of the Node install, we also will get the Node Package Manager, NPM. And I've installed that as well. So those are kind of three prerequisites for running all this stuff. And then we can now jump over to the command line. Um, it gives you some instructions here for uh, you know, different operating systems. Uh, these are all Linux-like systems or Unix-like systems. And what I've got here, I'm going to use the sudo command just to make sure I get everything installed. They initially say you can use it without it. but So we're going to go ahead and, and do that right now. I'll move this over here. So hopefully you can kind of see the command while I'm typing it here too. Got sudo npm install. Gonna do it globally. And the package name is 
Foundation CLI. And what we're doing here, password installed, there we go. It's going out and grabbing this framework and installing it on your local machine so then we can create, essentially this is all like a template, it brings down all the scripts, it brings down everything you need for uh, Node, this whole foundation for emails system. It takes a minute, it may give you some warnings about deprecated things, you can fix those later on. I've installed this several times, so I haven't really needed to upgrade anything. And now we're done. And you'll see there's a whole ton of things in the package tree. Just, you can go explore that after you've installed it. Now, the last thing we want to do is we want to, now we have everything installed, we can actually create a project and get started with things. So what I can do is I will do foundation new Put in a, we're going to tell it what framework we want to use. And in this case, we want the framework for emails. So foundation is the command. We want a new, new setup. We want to select which framework, which framework we're going to install, and it's the emails. So we'll go ahead and do that. First thing it asks us is, what's the project going to be called? And I will do sample email. Now let's do sample. That'll be a good, good start. Gives us a little, nice little ASCII text, a little ASCII art header, and starts downloading things. Now, it takes a little while to download. Um, it downloads a lot of stuff. And this is where Git comes in, because it's actually grabbing a copy of the repository and pu putting it on your local machine. So it builds all this stuff right on your machine. So we will wait for the stuff to install and come back when it's done. Okay, we're all done installing here, and as you can see, I'll scroll up a little bit, it's installed a ton of stuff. So you'll see that it's not only downloaded and installed SAS, but it's installed a lot of the image optimizers, uh, Gulp, the whole nine yards here. So it's got a lot of stuff, so we are all set. Now it'll say here, you're all set, you've got the new project folders created. Node modules have been installed, and the Bower components installed. Now you can run Foundation Watch in the sample folder. What we're going to do, though, first is take a look at the directory structure. You don't actually you can use an npm command instead to get things uh, rolling here. But let's take a look at the directory structure first. It installs a ton of stuff, so beware. 
Uh, on Windows, if you try to remove this directory, it's going to complain because the actual file names and path names get too long. So you'll have to do, use another third-party tool to, uh, to remove those directories. Um, Linux is less of an issue, and we're on Linux right now. So I've opened things up in uh, Sublime Text. We can take a look at the directory structure. And the idea here is, right now, we haven't really started up anything, so we don't have any distribution directories. But we have a source directory. That's where you're going to be doing all of your work in. You have assets for your emails. You've got images and your SCSS files for styles. Helper stuff you don't really need to touch. You've got layouts, and you've got pages. Uh, layouts, as we'll take a look at here, the layout is actually the HTML for the overall page. And then inside here, it actually uses the handlebars templating stuff under the hood. Uh, you'll see this under the, down here. Any of the pages that you have defined in the pages directory will get placed. The contents of those will get rendered right into here. So if we open up index.html, uh, you'll see all the content here. So why don't we fire things up? We can take a look at the distribution directory when it's done. So let's go, let's go into sample. We'll do npm start. It's going to think about it for a minute. It's going to, and what it does is it starts processing all of the style sheet files, the HTML files in the pages directory the default layout and fires up a local web server for you so you don't even need to have a web server installed to actually work on these so it opens up localhost 3000 and this is the contents of your HTML email now that we've done that let's jump back to where'd my there we go let's jump back to here and we can take a look at some of the details of what's going on here. I can get this window resized. We now have a distribution directory, a dist directory. Inside that we have a CSS with a rendered app CSS and you've got an uh, index.html. This gives you the processed version of everything in this distribution directory. One of the things we really haven't done yet though, this is simply doing it for viewing. Oh, if we want to do something for final production, oops, what did I do here? And you'll see here, we'll jump down to the directions here. It gives you a breakdown of the file structure, so you can see that in the source directory. The boilerplate, that's your basic stuff. Give you some grid basics, and we'll go over some of the inky stuff in a future email and inlining. Now I think what we need to be able to do, I'm looking for it myself here because I just did this recently. Let me find it, get right back. Hang on a second. All right, we're back. I'm going to look down here at the section on inlining. And right here we've got run npm build. So we're going to do that from the command line here. npm run build. This does much of what we just did. What it does, though, is it you'll see that it gives us I can, now if we look at some of these files in the disk directory, it gives us compressed or minimized HTML. This is our app CSS. It's generated from the CSS files. These are now inlined. These styles are inlined into the HTML. So all you have to do now, so long as your images, and we'll talk more about this in a little bit, in a future video here, but the images have to be sourced 
someplace else generally. You want to have them sourced in a CDN network or some other outside server that your customers who are getting the emails can actually see those, you know, retrieve those images from. But all those image references and all the style sheets are all now embedded inside of this big, long, nasty looking HTML file. So it's, you know, no longer have to do that yourself. So that's it. That covers just about everything for the installation of it. Um, if you want to stop the processor down here, we've got this, it tells you what's going on. Every time you save a file in the source directory, say we are going to go to default. If I make one little change, I save it, it's going to reprocess everything. So anything that's changed, it'll reprocess it so it reloads the browser automatically for you. So all the new changes will be shown. All right, that's it. We can hit Control C, and that'll stop the processing of things and shut down the web server and close the browser. And we'll come back in a future video with how to actually create some more of these uh, HTML templates. Thanks for watching.